This is Jonathan Anger of Fear for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined by the former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Joseph Parker, in training camp in the UK ahead of May 1st, Derek Chisora. Um, it's going down. Joe, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, well, we uh, like into the third week of our training camp and everything is on track. I mean, it's a, for me, it's a new environment, new trainer, um, new setup. So making the most of the, you know, the opportunity and enjoying the whole process and doing a lot of learning. Mm. Well, it's a big fight um, with Derek Chisora coming up, as I said, May 1st, Sky Sports Box Office and DAZN. Um, before we get into that, um, let's go back a bit um, to the junior far fight. Um, how do you assess that fight, Joe? Um, as a fighter, you always want to... You know, it's always great to have a fight locked in and it's always great to get a win. Um, there's, there's certain ways of winning and uh, I, I don't, it wasn't the best way of winning, like, you know, on points and, um, you know, when I wanted to go out there and get a, a good win in better fashion. So, I mean, overall, it's always great to get a win because you can move on to the next fight or bigger fights, but uh, the way that it, oh, I won, it wasn't really how we wanted. But I guess it's all, you know, it's all learning and it's all just uh, shows that there's still a lot to work on, a lot to improve on, and, um, you know, just I'll take the victory. Mm. Was there a lot of pressure heading into that, into that fight, knowing, you know, Junior Far and it was a massive um, event in New Zealand? Was it, you know, a pr feeling the pressure, both of you? Uh, not so much pressure. I mean, we both knew what we, we had to do, and we both had great teams behind us. And it's just one of those things where, you know, I was pushing, or maybe I was pushing too much for the fight. And he was, you know, with the game plan that him and his team came up with, was, you know, he was avoiding a lot of the, you know, attacks that I was putting in place. So, um, you know, just uh, one of those fights where, yeah, we knew each other from back in the day. And it was, it was a great, it was a great fight for New Zealand. Yeah. Back in New Zealand. We had a big crowd there. So it was good. Um, following that fight, um, the news came out that you'd um, split um, on good terms with Kevin Barry. Um, I have to say, I'm sure, you know, a lot of people like me were quite shocked to hear after such a successful um, period together that you had um, split. Um, was it just a case of, you know, uh, you'd reached the end with each other or, yeah, how did it sort how did you both sort of come to that decision? Uh, we just sat down after the fight. And um, we're just honest with each other. And, you know, we've been together for eight years and we've achieved a lot together. And Kevin Barry is a great, uh, a great trainer. And he's also, you know, more than a trainer to me. There's a, there's a very strong relationship that I have with him because, you know, I've lived there for yeah. a lot of the years that I was training and his family looked after me and everything. So it was, uh, it was probably one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make. But uh, in terms of boxing, um, you know, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go to the, in the future and then sort of look back and say, hey, I wish I tried this or I wish I did this. Um, so I thought it was, um, you know, it was the right opportunity or right chance to, you know, to, to take the next step of trying something else. And uh, we both, you know, we're, we're both going to remain great friends. And, you know, he's always going to support me and I'm always going to support him. And, and uh, they're like family. But it was, uh, it was one of those movies that we just had to try. What would you say your um, best moments under Kevin were? You obviously became heavyweight champion, a couple of defences, those big fights in the UK. You had a great run. We had a great run. Um, you know, Kevin and I are the first uh, New Zealand heavyweights uh, you know, team to become champion of the world. And we've, we've travelled around the world together and defended the title against uh, you know, Huey Fury, uh, Kajanu in New Zealand, and also... Anthony Joshua, the big fight. So we've achieved a lot together. And it's, uh, it's going to go down in history in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, Andy Lee, um, your new coach, um, well publicised that Tyson Fury um, put you in touch with him. Uh, how have you found training with Andy? What's he sort of added to your game? Um, Andy doesn't want to change a lot. I mean, it was, it was Tyson Fury's suggestion to go and train with Andy, which was a great uh, suggestion. And... Um, you know, when I was looking for someone to train me, I, I called Tyson and he and he just said to me, hey, I, I feel like this will be a good match for you. And so it's, uh, for now, we're still working. We're still um, getting used to each other because, you know, when you're training with someone else for eight years it's um, you know, and you 
try a different coach. It's, it's, you know, everyone has their own way of training and thinking and doing things. So I'm still learning. I'm still, we're still clicking and we, I think we're there. I think we're there. We're putting in some great work, but it's, um, for me, I'm enjoying the whole process and it's, uh, we're having fun while training hard. Yeah, I mean, I saw you with um, you were with Tyson. Was it this morning and Isaac Lowe? This morning, yeah, we went for a six six mile run. Ooh, it was good. <laughs> Are you um, staying with with Tyson at the moment, or uh, we have a setup? We have a good setup here in Morecambe where um, you know Tyson's uh, opened up everything for us. You know, the gym. Um, he's given us opportunity. You know, I'm with Andy here. We're staying at one of the houses that he's got ready for us so i mean or let us use so he's um he's pretty much just saying hey here to help you to you know do it do your best and see what you can do in the division you know you have to beat your sore otherwise everything will be it'll be a question mark how your career will end up if you don't if you don't win so he's uh he's been a massive help very grateful tyson must be really interested in this fight because he's obviously friends with you He's had those two fights with um, Derek, and he, I think he gets on well with Derek as well. So, yeah, he, I think he's, he, gets along, he gets along well with everyone. And yeah. uh, he had the two fights with Derek, and you know, it's um, you know, he gets along well with him, he gets along well with me. So, I think going into the fight, just going to be whoever trains the hardest and whoever the best man is will win. Let's talk about this fight with Derek because you know, this has been a fight that people wanted to see a couple of years ago. Did you feel like you and Derek had to meet? Before you know, either of you, you know, called it a day. This fight surely had to happen. I felt like it was a fight that um, needs to happen, and I'm so happy that it's happening now. I mean, we had a lockdown a while ago, and because of health issues, I had to be pulled out of the fight. But I was one of those fights where I always thought this is, you know, I would love the opportunity to fight him. He's a he's a name. He's he's a big name. He's got a good following here in the UK, and he's been around for a long time. He's had some great wins in recent times, and also some losses. But he's always uh, given a good account of himself and I feel like it's going to be you know it's going to be and he's got a new you know, he's got a new coach himself you know Buddy McGirt so it's going to be um, exciting to see what they're going to bring the new things that they're going to bring to his to his style and to what he does in the ring What, what do you think of that link up um, just announced the other days he's um, joined up with Buddy McGirt I think it's a, it's a great uh, move for him I mean Buddy McGirt's been around for a long time and he's uh, he's he's coached many fighters so it's, uh, who knows what they're going to bring. Mm. Um, you, Derek, uh, you, you, we kind of know what he usually brings uh, to the fight. Um, is that sort of a style that maybe suits you and, you know, a, a style you like fighting? I mean, if it's the Derek that turned up against Alexander Usyk, this is going to be a war between you two. Yeah, we, I, I think everyone knows what Derek's going to bring. Right, um, there's the you know, Buddy McGurk can change a few things here and there, but we already know he's going to put on pressure and throw a lot of punches. And you know, I, I always um, with the fights that I uh, I have had with you know shorter opponents and ones that put on pressure, I've always done pretty good and okay. So it's uh, you know, just whoever's going to implement the game plan um, better will will get the good result at the end. Was it um, an easy decision or difficult decision for you to take the fight, considering you had the fight with Junior Files, quite a quick turnaround? Or is it a case of, you know, you haven't been as active as you would have liked in the last few years, so the more activity for you, the better? Yeah, the more activity, the better. The second, you know, the latter. Because uh, as a fighter, when you're training, what do you want to do? You're training for a fight. And I guess if I didn't take this opportunity, who knows when I would have got another fight. Uh, maybe end of the year, and it's uh, it's it's always great to have a fight and keep the momentum going. Um, and as a fighter, when you're fighting constantly, you're always learning, and you're just getting the the, the sort of uh, experience in the ring, and you can't beat that. What, what was your reaction when he started FaceTiming you at one a.m. or whatever it was? I woke up with a few missed calls, and I was like, "What the heck is this? I guess, <laughs> like, this is the not the right time to be calling." <laughs> And then uh, I video called him back at a more appropriate time, which he answered, and then that's how we, uh, you know, that's how we got the discussions um, sort of going and continuing. You can tell Derek's up for the fight, though. He's always up for a fight. He's he's a veteran, he's a veteran in the sport. He's been in the sport for a long time, and he's, he's had some great fights. You know, even though he's got has uh, what, ten losses, but he's he's been in the ring with some big names. Do you, Do you like his way of sort of the way he's operated his career? He just you know, takes the biggest fights he can possibly do. And, you know, when you look at the landscape of the division, 
Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua set to meet later this year. We don't really know, you know, the path for a world title for anyone really. So it looks it looks like all of you guys may may have to just fight each other and, and see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen with that main fight and when it's going to be locked in. But in the meantime, since we're not, we don't, no one else has the opportunity to fight for the titles here. We should all keep busy and all keep fighting each other. And eventually, when that happens, then you know the the ones at the top can fight for it. What what's your prediction uh, right now for for your fight with Derek? Do you think you can win? In I back years? myself. I always back myself to win and follow the follow the plan. It should be a good fight. It should be, you know, he's going to come forward. Who knows? I'm probably going to go forward too or box and move, mix it up and uh, catch him with a good one. Um, just uh, away from your fight um, on the weekend, Dillian White, the Alexander Povetkin. Did you watch the fight? I watched the fight, yeah. I think a lot of people tune in to watch the fight. Mm. Well, what did you make of Dillian's performance? Uh, I thought it was a good performance. I thought he, he did what he had to do to uh, get revenge. And, you know, he got him out of there um, in, good, in good fashion, you know. And so Pavekin, I think Pavekin, I know, I'm not sure how much he has left to offer the heavyweight division, whether it's time for him to finish now, but um, he's had a great career himself. That's still, that's still a rematch you, you want, right, against Dillian? I would love a rematch with Dillian, but that's... That'll be down the line. I just got to take care of this guy first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just lastly on Dillian, there's potential talk of possible fights between him and Deontay Wilder, Andy Ruiz. You've obviously fought. What what kind of fight um, do you like for, for Dillian White? Do you like the fight against Deontay and Andy Ruiz? I think Dillian will take any of those fights. Like he's He likes to be involved in the biggest fights he can get. Um, and I think those will be great fights for him. Great stuff. Joe, really appreciate uh, you coming on, talking to pro boxing fans this afternoon. Um, look forward to this fight like a lot of people. Great card, May 1st, not just your fight. A great undercard There's a lot. Well. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm looking forward to fighting and, and seeing all the other fights of the undercard. And uh, thanks for having me on. And, look, and uh, your UK fans will be pleased to see you back here. Hopefully there will be some fans. Ah. I don't know if there will be any fans, but fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Appreciate it, Joe. Take care of yourself. That's about May first. You too. Have a good day. Take care, man.